Welcome to this taster session for A-Level Computer Science. The purpose of this video is to give you an outline of the course so you know what you'll be studying, breakdown of the different papers and how they're assessed, and we're going to do a couple of activities as well. So the first thing is entry requirements. So in order to study computer science further, you need to have already studied it at GCSE. And mathematics is absolutely essential to progressing further with computer science and taking that next step. In terms of resources, relatively straightforward. We'll provide you with all of the exercise books you need. There is one textbook that we use. The details of this are on the next slide. You'll need a good scientific calculator. USB flash drives mainly needed in the second year of the course when you'll be doing coursework. But it's a good way to reliably transfer work between school and home. You also need a computer at home that's running Windows and has Office installed. And most importantly, Visual Studio which is the integrated development environment or IDE that we're going to be using. And I'll explain how you download and set this up when we start. But it is a free download, so there's no cost involved. If you have uh, an Apple Mac, for example, it is possible to set up a virtualized environment for Windows and other software. We'll also be using Google Classroom regularly for the setting and handing in of homework. So a little look at the preferred textbook that we use. It tends to range between 26 and 30 pounds, but this does cover both years of the course. So let's take a look at how the A-level computer science is actually assessed. There are three components to this. The first is paper one. Now paper one is all about programming, problem solving, and thinking computationally. So you will have a fair amount of knowledge from GCSE with programming fundamentals, and we'll be looking to build on that significantly. So the way this is assessed is actually on screen. So you'll be in front of the computer for two and a half hours, and a fair amount of that time you will be programming. So with paper one, you are given what's known as a skeleton program very early on in the year. And what this is, is a program that AQA have made, but it might not be quite finished. There might be features missing, there might be bugs and so on, but it's generally a good few thousand lines. And the idea is that you'll become familiar with this skeleton program and you'll work on it throughout the year so that when you get into the actual exam there won't be any surprises on the main program that you'll be asked questions on. There are other parts to the exam as well though. There's a lot of theory to cover in terms of developing programming. We'll be looking at object oriented programming which will be a completely different approach to what you're used to in addition to many new algorithms that you'll need to understand. Paper two is a traditional exam, so two and a half hours, and this is short and extended questions. My colleague will talk to you more about paper two later, but you'll be covering a wide range of theory topics, some extended from GCSE, but there's a large number of new topics that you won't have seen before. So you would take both papers at the end of year 13, and together this makes up 80% of your overall A-level grade. The final 20% is coursework. This is the NEA. And here you're able to choose a problem that you'd like to solve using the skills you've learned throughout the year. And the idea is you pick something that you're interested in and that you can apply a range of problem solving and computational skills to. A lot of students really enjoy the computing project, but it is a lot of work, big time sink, so you need to find something that you're really interested in. And it's really important you're enthusiastic about continuing your computer science journey for a further two years. OK, so just a little bit more about paper one. We're going to be covering all programming concepts, including new approaches to solving problems and writing code. You'll be looking at a number of different data structures, some of which you'll be familiar with, such as arrays. There's a large number of new algorithms that we're going to look at, and you'll learn how to build these and trace through them. We have to cover a lot about computational thinking. And these last two sections here are absolutely key to what computer science at A-level is all about. It's not just about writing code. It's about improving your analytical and problem solving skills so you can think both logically and laterally when dealing with a range of different circumstances and problems. So on the subjects of problem solving, there's a little task here that I'd like you to have a go at. You have a toasting grill, which is represented by these two squares here, and you can only hold a maximum of two pieces of bread at a time. And you need to determine the quickest way to toast three pieces of bread when each side needs to be grilled. So we've got a piece of bread here. This needs to be grilled one side, and then you'd flip it over to it on the other side to make your piece of toast. So pause the video, take some time to analyze and attempt to solve this problem before you continue. 
Okay, so hopefully you've got at least one, if not two different solutions to this. So to model this, I've labeled our slices of bread, slice A, B, and C to represent the three pieces. And of course we have side one and two for each of those. So one way of solving this problem is that you put slice A and slice B on a side, you grill those, once they're done, you simply flip them over. And then when this stage is complete, you'll end up with two slices of toast. We then have a further slice and we need to grill this on side one, but we've got to wait until that's done before we can do side two. So this scenario has taken four moves. And the problem here could be that while you're waiting for slice C to grill, these two slices could end up being cold by the time this is done. The point is we have solved the problem. Now, another way of doing it, which would be a worse solution in terms of efficiency, is this one. So here, we're not making use of our resources because the second place here on the grill is never used. We're simply taking each slice, grilling both sides, and then putting the next slice in and so on. We still end up with a similar outcome, although the slices will be a varying temperature by that point, but this has taken us a very long time to do, six moves in this case. So the optimal solution only takes three moves. If we look here, we've got slice A and B. We grill one side, like so. When these are done, we take one of them out. In this case, I've taken slice B. And we then grill slice C, but we flip A over to its other side. And what that then means is we only need to grill slice B on side two, because we've only done side one and then the other side of slice C here. And we'll end up with our three pieces of toast. It does mean, of course, that A could get cold while this is happening. But the point I'm making here is we arrived at the same solution and we have three different approaches. And that's one of the big differences with A-level. At GCSE, arriving at the solution may well have been okay. But at A-level, we need to start looking, how did you get there? Is it efficient? Can we improve things like the speed it took or the amount of space and memory that you're using? So paper two is a bit different from paper one. Paper two is a completely written exam. It will last two hours and 30 minutes, but in similar way to paper one, it is worth 40% of your final grade. The topics that you cover are the fundamentals of data representation. This takes you a bit further than what you've done at GCSE. Here you will look at negative numbers, you will look at how binary is used to represent uh, different numbers of very large, very small numbers using floating point, numbers with fractional parts. It again goes into how data is represented in images and sound, but again you just go a bit further and a bit more in depth than what you've done at GCSE. Fundamentals of computer systems, you look more at hardware in this point. So you look at some things like digital cameras and RFID tag stuff you won't have done at GCSE. You still look at the role of the operating system. You look at programming languages and their classification, so high and low level languages. You will look at the different types of translators, just a bit more in depth, so compilers and interpreters. And you will look at logic gates but you'll have to deal with more than the three basic ones you've learned of and or not. You've then got to put with NAND, NOR, and the exclusive OR gate. And then you'll look into Boolean algebra, which is a tricky topic. If you ask the year 13, they will tell you that it is one of the hardest topics that you will do, but if you have enough practice, you'll get there. The fundamentals of computer organization and architecture. This is to do with the processor and how it does its job. You go more in depth than what you've done at GCC. Here you also look at something called assembly language, which is a low level language, which is still used to code systems that require extremely fast execution speeds. You also look at how secondary storage devices are set up and used and their functionality. The consequences of computing, you very similar to what you've done GCC, you now we've got the longer answer questions where you have to answer a topic about always oh, privacy still there, this, that, the other. This is the consequences of uses of computing. So the legal, the social, the ethical, the societal, how it all impacts together. And it looks at environmental impacts as well. 
Communication and networking, so again, you go a bit further, so you look more at communication methods, how they point uh, transmissions are done from end to end. Network topologies, you learn between the difference between a physical and a logical topology. You learn about wireless networking and how data is sent wirelessly across the network. Talk about communication and privacy, all sorts of stuff in this section. Just looking at how databases are set up and SQL but they are set up so that you can use it for your project later on. Big data, this is the topic of just the amount of data that's purely being generated every day now. We are generating so much data, it just takes a while to analyze it. And this is where the final topic that you will look at, the fundamentals of functional programming. Functional programming is used to analyze big data and how it, and get answers from it basically. All right, so the next part we're going to do is a little introduction to something you will study in September, and it's called Two's Complement. As you can see from the title, it means negative numbers using binary. So, you're going to learn how to convert a positive binary number into a negative binary number using Two's Complement. So, this is the method you need to follow. Uh, one, work out the number in normal 8-bit binary. Two, Flip all the bits so that zeros become ones and ones become zeros. Three, add one to this new number. Four, check the sign bit. That's the bit furthest to the left. It's also known as the most significant bit. If it is a one, the number is negative. If it is a zero, the number is positive. Check the math by performing the sum, and then six, you're done. Simple as that. So let's have a little walk through the example. So we're going to convert the binary number 56 into negative 56. So step one, write the answer, write 56 in normal 8-bit binary. So that's 32 plus 16 plus 8, 56. Two, flip the bits. So as you can see, the zeros become ones and the ones become zeros. Step three and four, they're joined together. So step three is add one. So you've got this number here plus one. The red numbers are carry bits. So you can see one plus one gives you two, so that's zero, carry the one. One plus one is two, which is zero, carry the one. Same again. This time we've got zero plus one, which is one. And then you just bring everything else down. Four is check the sign bit. Well, as you can see, the sign bit is one, which means the number is negative. This means that the answer is worked out as minus 128 plus 64 plus 8 minus 128 plus 64 plus 8 and that gives you the answer minus 56 okay so the last part is the non-exam assessment and this is your project in the second year and the idea here is that you'll independently solve and investigate a practical problem. And you'll need to tap into a lot of technical skills in order to score well on this. So some of the examples, as you can see there, an app for a phone or tablet, some sort of application of AI, artificial intelligence, a small and well-focused computer game. There are a range of data processing problems you can look into. Optimization problems are commonplace in the world and always needs good solutions for them. A simulation for business or science or some sort of dynamic website. Now, most students do a data processing problem because a lot of the content we teach for the exam for that anyway. And systems would include membership systems for a gym, perhaps a library loan system, a stock control system for a shop, an appointment system for hairdressers, for example. But in addition to that, optimization problems is also a common area. So we might be looking at the best way of traveling to a destination or sorting items into a certain order in the quickest possible way, perhaps in a supermarket. Games and AI are tricky to do in the time that you have, but a recent example was a Scrabble game where the computer tried to assist the player in finding the best possible words on a Scrabble board at a given time. Simulations have also been done, for example, a series of physics experiments to show motion and various forces. So there's a lot of choice here. The most important thing is that you pick something that you're passionate about and interested in. And you'll have time to research this and explore ideas in the summer holidays after you finish year 12. 
The milestones are just repeated here, although you will have these already. Task one is documenting the differences between the language you know. For most of you, that will be Java. Compare it to C Sharp. Just note what the differences are in how you write code in the syntax and come up with some advantages and disadvantages. The second task is practical. You need to use the REPL online compiler so you can start using C Sharp already. Pick one level five program and one level six program you did from GCSE and try coding them again, but using C Sharp instead. So remember, a level five, six task is a combination of variables, user input, if statements, iteration, and arrays. And if you want a further challenge, you can always have a go at coding the NEA that you worked on as well. Task three is a booklet. This is heavily related to paper two, and you'll need to show how to convert between the different number bases as listed there. Just note that the person that's going to use this has no prior knowledge, so you're essentially teaching them how to do this and make sure you cover binary addition as well. That covers the three tasks for the summer milestone work for A-level computer science.